So today it is day 10 of 15 days of foundation. This is where I test out a new foundation every single day for 15 days. It is cloudy and rainy today in Seattle and cold and I'm so freaking excited. I'm gonna go put on a sweater, so excited. So today we're gonna be talking about a foundation that I have heard so freaking much about over the years. Mostly amazing things. This is the Dior Air Flash Spray Foundation. I tested out the Sephora Spray Foundation in I think it was season two. I'll link that video down below and in the little eye over here. But in this review I mentioned I don't know if I'll ever be able to bring myself to purchase a $60 Dior foundation. The day has come. I did it testing it out for you guys. This foundation I feel like is one of the most loved kind of hyped up foundations on YouTube. This is a spray foundation in a can. Sounds like spray paint. Retails for $62, but you get 2.3 fluid ounces of product. I hope everything's okay. There's been like a siren every two minutes, literally. I'm assuming they give you more product than a standard fluid ounce in spray foundations. You kind of have to use more. I don't know how long that would last compared to like a liquid foundation. So I have the lightest shade in this, which is 100 Ivory on Sephora. It says very light neutral undertone. I would not call this shade very light. I'm gonna start swatches right here so you can see how this shade compares to the Sephora airbrush foundation and also a few other foundations that I own. So since it's a little bit tricky to swatch spray foundations, I'm just gonna spray both the Dior and the Sephora on my arms so you guys can see the shades. All right, so there's the Dior Air Flash in 100. I'm gonna do the lightest shade of the Sephora spray foundation, which is cream. Okay, that was a bizarre swatch. So as you can see, the lightest shade of the Sephora one is quite a bit lighter than the Dior. Reading on Sephora, it says it's an ultra light foundation that delivers an airbrushed effect with precision and ease. Get a runway, run, run, runway. Runway ready look with this innovative mist foundation inspired by the airbrushing techniques used backstage at fashion shows. Customize your coverage by choosing to apply it straight from the can for a lighter finish or with a kabuki brush for fuller coverage. Diminish the appearance of skin irregularities and fine lines, leaving your skin glowing with optimal radiance. So that's all of the claims. Obviously for 62 bucks, again, this is gonna have to kind of blow my mind. If you've been enjoying 15 Days of Foundation, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. So if you wanna see what I think of the Dior Skin Air Flash Foundation and how it applies somewhere throughout the day, and if it's worth it, 62 bucks, you're in the right place, just keep watching. Very exciting news. The chin reflector is back. Totally forgot about this with the move, but a lot of the times when in my mirror, it looks like my foundation matches and you guys think it's too light, it's because there's a major shadow being cast right here from the lights. So this basically bounces it back. Do you see the difference? No chin reflector, chin reflector. So right now it's eight. 46 in the morning. Like I said, I reviewed the Sephora airbrush foundation and in that video I tried spraying it all over my face, tried it with a brush, sponge, and I despise spraying foundation on my face. It basically gets everywhere. It gets on your clothes, gets on your hair. It's not something that I would do on a daily basis or even for like special events because it just gets everywhere. I also have lash extensions on right now so I feel like spraying all over my face would be not a great idea. So I'm gonna try just spraying like a small area on my cheek and blending it out with a brush it says for fuller coverage to use a brush and that's what I'm going for. Taking it out of the box, here's what it looks like. Let's shake this. I feel like I'm about to do some crafting. Oh, that just like thickened up really quick. Okay, I'm scared. If you are gonna try spraying this all over your face, I would definitely put on like a headband, a towel around your face, uh, around your face. <laughs> Don't do that. A towel or something around your body because you're gonna be covered in foundation if you don't. Actually, I should probably do that even though I'm just spraying like a small section of my face. I'm not gonna spray it from super far away. I'm just gonna spray it and then like blend it out with a, <clears throat> where is my voice going? And then blend it out with a brush. Oh. Mm, just got that in my mouth, pretty sure. Okay, I'm gonna blend that out. Whoa, that's a lot of product. Ooh, off the bat, this has much better coverage than the Sephora Airbrush Foundation. Whoa, that looks really nice and smooth. Shade is definitely dark. Hopefully this doesn't oxidize. 
I feel like it's already oxidizing actually. Did it not just get way darker? For down here on my neck, I'm gonna spray it just directly on the brush. By the way, I'm using my e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. Didn't say that. I'm gonna spray it right on the brush. I'm probably just gonna have to blend this really far down my neck. So it's not covering acne super well. Like down here, you can definitely still see my acne with one layer, but it might build. I'm gonna spray some on the back of the palette and then dip my brush into it. It does kind of like fly up. I'm gonna dip my brush in. It seems to go pretty far. Yeah. I don't know, I do feel like it gives you the best coverage and goes on the best if you spray it on and then blend it out. That side, I'm not getting quite as good of coverage and it doesn't look quite as smooth as this side. Block the eyelashes. Yeah, for whatever reason, you get way better coverage just spraying it on your face and it just looks better that way. I have a damp sponge here. I'm gonna just try and smooth out my nose. Add a little bit on the sponge. The finish looks really pretty. Very smoothing and it does kind of look almost airbrushed. I think for the forehead, I wanna try spraying it on and then blending it out with the sponge. Ooh, my eyebrows are bad right now. <laughs> they're at that point where they're like too short to pluck and wax, you know what I'm saying? Really don't like spraying this on, but gotta do what you gotta do. Let's attempt to not get this all over my hairline. Looks really good on the center of my forehead. Yeah, it looks pretty. I could see how if you didn't have acne or like a lot to cover up, how this would look full coverage. Cause on the areas of my face where I don't, it looks really beautiful and it looks pretty full coverage. Where I have all my stuff going on, it's not totally covering it. I'm gonna try and spray some down here and see if we can build it up to cover my acne. But on areas like my forehead, it looks like really great coverage. I'm gonna do the sponge again, I think. It goes really far, like you can see the product kind of spreading there. It is building, still doesn't look like full coverage. So I think if you have acne, this is one that I would probably go in with one layer and then just spot conceal. I don't typically like doing that in foundation videos because then you see concealer and not the foundation. But for today, for testing it out, I'm just gonna leave it like that. But if I was wearing this, I would put it on one layer like this side and then just go in and spot conceal on those spots. If I'm remembering correctly, this doesn't seem to dry quite as fast as the Sephora one, which I like because you have a little bit more time to work with it before it totally like sets down. I think you get about the same coverage with brush and sponge on this one. It's looking beautiful. The foundation is now like down my neck to here. <laughs> finish looks like a really pretty satin finish. I am loving the way my forehead looks. My forehead looks super smooth, very like airbrushed. So does the rest of my face. It is getting a little bit cakey around my nose area. Like my upper lip and nose already are starting to crease and look a little bit heavy, but my chin looks good, cheeks look good. It also feels pretty lightweight. Like it's not one of those foundations that you can feel like when you talk and stuff, it just feels like air. I don't think I'm gonna powder my face with this one, but we will see. So I'm gonna do the rest of makeup and I'll be right back. All right, so it's now 9.40. We're calling the check-in time, nine o'clock, since that's when I left you guys last and finished up my face. I did not end up setting my face. I didn't really feel like I needed to and I felt like it might take away from the finish. Powder products blended out on top fine, but I do feel like when I was putting on my contour, it kind of took away some of the coverage and like rubbed it off a little bit. I would not recommend wearing earrings when spraying this on your face. I had to do like a deep clean of my earrings to get the foundation out, but everything right now is looking great. It does look really dewy, but I think it's just kind of like a healthy glow, which I like. I took a little clip in natural lighting, so I'll put that in right here. I think everything looks good. I'm a little bit concerned about creasing just because it's already starting around my nose a little bit. And also when I was doing my makeup, my forehead right here and my line started creasing. So I just kind of smoothed it out with the sponge. So I'm curious to see if this creases more throughout the day. So on the rest of my face, it's been a few days since I filmed day nine. And since then I've been using the Smashbox contour palette, which I've mentioned another video, I don't know if it's one of these, but this shade is so freaking pretty. I've been like addicted to this as a contour shade. And then for blush, I used a Makeup Forever blush. I use this one right here. The number will be down below. For my face highlight, which got a little intense today, but I'm kind of feeling it. And for my eyeshadow, I used the BH Cosmetics Carly Bible palette. Talked about this five billion times, but I love this palette, it's beautiful. I went in with this shade for the highlight and then just some of the purple kind of matte shades for my eyeshadows. Lips, I'm also obsessed with this color. This is the L'Oreal 
Infallible Paints Matte in the shade Tongue Tied. I used this a couple days ago in a video, but then I topped it with the LA Girl Lipify One Swipe Intense Creamy Color. This is in the shade Dreamer and just added like a little bit of a glossy finish to this. These are really nice. They're super pigmented. And that is it. You can't even appreciate my taco shirt right now. There you go. So check-in time is 9 o'clock. I have to go clean my entire car because I spilled Sprite everywhere all over it yesterday. Also, a bird or some kind of animal did the most massive shit on the side of my car. Things you wanna know. But that's what's happening this morning. So I'll see you guys in a few hours in natural lighting. Okay, so it's now two o'clock, so it's been on for five hours. And I just took a look in the mirror. It looks really nice. It looks like very, almost natural and soft. It looks really nice and smooth still on the skin. Doesn't look like it's really breaking down anywhere. It looks pretty much like it did. I feel like when I first applied it, I might be getting a little bit oily on the center of my forehead. It's definitely oxidized a couple shades, I feel like, from when I first put it on. So it is way dark. It looks normal in the viewfinder. I don't know how to show you guys how it actually looks. There. That's a little better. Right now I think it looks like a nice medium coverage foundation. We'll see you guys at the end of the night for the last check-in. I just got so freaking hot. Whew. Why did I just start like having a heat flash? Okay, so it's now 6.15, so it's been on for a little over nine hours and it has held up pretty dang well. I'm clearly a little bit oily, but it's not actually breaking down underneath the oil. I still don't think it's like overly oily. It just kind of looks like dewy foundation even on my upper lip and around my nose where i thought i was gonna have some creasing for me this amount of creasing around my nose and everything is really good if they made this in a shade that actually matched me i would totally wear this with just a little bit of spot concealer on i don't even think i really need a powder i could put a powder on if i wanted it to look more matte but i actually like this amount of glow i feel like it just looks like healthier skin. I'm gonna try somehow mixing this. So I'll update you guys in the wrap up video what I mix it with and how it went. I take notes on all the foundation combinations I try from this series for the wrap up video. So you guys will kind of hear my final thoughts in that video. But I think this one is beautiful if you want a medium coverage, kind of natural looking foundation. For having combo skin myself, I think if you're on the oilier side, you could make this work. If you're dry, I don't know, I think this one could work too because it does have this nice kind of glow to it. I don't see it clinging to any of my dry patches or anything. I'm actually kind of surprised it didn't settle in more because right when I first applied it, like I said, I had that crease kind of up here, which didn't get worse throughout the day and around my nose. So I almost think this one could be nice on more mature skin as well. But if you guys have tried this foundation, let me know what you think of it down below. Do you use it with a powder? Do you like it on its own? Let us all know down below. If you guys are excited for day 11 of 15 days foundation tomorrow, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.